Let's talk a little bit about how I do my uh, index for taking a GEAC exam. So a little bit about me. Um, I basically have been working computers for a very long time. I started um, working in a shop where I ran backup for Ultrix and VMS systems. You probably never heard of those. That's okay. Uh, Digital Equipment Corporation was a company in Massachusetts where I uh, where I actually grew up. Um, I was 15 years old. Did uh, you know? Did systems administration work after after high school? Um, since then, I've worked in a lot of different environments across a lot of different sectors, um, focusing on on operations and security operations. Um, basically, my uh, my current role is as a consultant. I work for um, several different organizations in different sectors currently. Um, global scope. I've worked with big telecoms, small companies. Um, defense sector companies, um, public companies, educational institutions. Um, I have written a class on building and, and operating security operations centers called the SOC class. You can look it up at SOC-class.com if you're interested in more details. My, um, my website for consulting is Montans.com. And something that I think uh, uh, most people who are working in security um, now should take a look at um, is this timeline, and I talk about building a security operations center, and um, you, there's some pretty good lessons learned in there. And if you go to that page, the montanscom slash timeline, there's an overview of what that uh, content actually entails. So this is uh, intended to be an overview video how, of how I take the certification exams for SANS classes. GEAC is actually the, the certification body. Um, it used to be that you would take the cert exam and then you would have to write a paper they did away with that requirement you no longer have to write a paper but they actually moved that over into something called the gold certification uh, as it turns out i'm a lazy person and i need requirements and, and structure in order to be able to actually get things accomplished um, most people actually need that which is the reason why i'm sharing this uh this this script with people um, i used to write lots and lots of Perl code for various places where I worked. Um, so that's why this index script is in Perl and um, I'm sharing it with you. It'll function on any system with, uh, with Perl. So this is how I actually take the GEC uh, exams. So uh, st I start by building an index. And the, the uh, question that a lot of people ask me is, well, wait a minute, there's an index in the back of the book. Why do I need to build an index? And this is where that structure comes in. It takes two to three hours to actually um, create the data from the book in my experience, um, that will feed into the index script. And that is incredibly well spent time studying the material. Now, for me, if I didn't have a task like you have to extract the data from each page, then I would just flip through the book and be like, yeah, 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 okay, yeah, I remember that, I remember that, yep, yep, that's good, that's good, that's good. And then when I went to the exam, I would be shown that I really didn't know that as well as I thought I did, okay? Um, so this is intended to make it so that you have a task to do, which is a, a known task, it's, it's easy, you know how to start it, you know what what to do while you're actually um, you know performing the task. Well, maybe you don't know yet. I'm about to tell you. Um, you you will know what to do in terms of how you're performing the task, and then you you know when you're finished. And when you're finished, um, then you're ready to take your first practice exam. So the way to uh, to build the index, and there are other other things out there that you can uh, that you can take a look at that uh, for. But the way that I build the index is uh, using this Perl script that I have hosted on a Google Drive. So you get there by going to bit.ly slash Crowley, that's me, dash index dash script. So HTTPS colon slash slash BIT dot LY slash CROWLEY dash INDEX dash script. Okay. So um, let me show you what I'm talking about. So I'm going to um, switch over to Linux VM um, for for the uh, for the demo portion of this. In my Linux VM, um, I have browsed already to that location. I'm going to download all of this. Um, so it'll take a second for it to zip it up, and then it'll prompt me where to save that. Um, I'm going to save this file, index Perl script. Then I'm going to go back to my virtual machines command prompt. And inside of downloads, I should have a, uh, a, a zip file. So I can basically unzip downloads. 
and then sans index Perl script. And it creates a folder called sans index Perl script. And inside of here, there's some sample data. Um, so these 575 files um, are sample data. Um, there is a readme file. And we ignore readme files because that's uh, what they're built for, right? We don't read them. Um, and then there's also the make index PL script, okay? Make index dot PL. Now, as it turns out, the readme file is actually also runnable. So I'm going to chmod 755 readme and then run readme. It's going to break, um, but that's okay. I'll show you why. Um, it says DOS to Unix command not found. Um, DOS to Unix, what it's supposed to do is fix uh, line endings. If you created the uh, files on um, a Word, uh, excuse me, on a Microsoft Windows operating system and moved them into Linux, um, that will break the script. Um, if you've done that, so this DOS to Unix was intended to, to fix that, um, but it's not installed on this version of Security Onion. No big deal. Um, create, it on the, create your uh, files on the, the Linux system and you won't have any issues with that. Um, the next failure and error here is it says fail to open 575.4 because in my readme, um, it actually runs against a whole bunch of files and then redirects the output into index.txt. Um, but we only have these three files as the sample data that I've provided. So I'm going to run it against those and then we'll, uh, and then we'll see how this actually works out. So dot slash make index.pl 575.1, 575.2, 575.3. Now the idea here is that this is the class dot book number. And from the sample data, what I actually have is um, some sample data in here. And if I just look at 575.1, um, what I'll see is that the page number is the first item on each line. And then the various topics that are covered inside of the uh, inside of the book, that particular page are separated by semicolons. And then I have topic comma subtopic. Okay. So you can look through these uh, these different uh, these different topics and subtopics. And in this case, looking through it, uh, these are some old files, right? I'm talking about BlackBerry. I don't know if you uh, if you've ever seen one of those that've been gone for so long. So here I'm going to run the makeindex.pl, and I end up with an alphabetical listing with the various page numbers of uh, data that I've collected. So here we see that Wireshark follow TCP stream is mentioned on 575 book one page 35 as well as 575 book three page 13. Okay, so this uh, this just takes the data that you built and spits it into a uh, into an alphabetical listing for you. Now, my suggestion for you is you take this, put it into a, a text file like index.txt, and then open that index.txt in some sort of an office editing document, and then at the bottom put the page number. So one of 15, or actually most of my indexes end up being about 20 to 30 pages long. Um, so, you know, page one of 26, page two of 26. The idea being that uh, if something happened in the middle of the exam and things got out of order, it would be relatively easy for you to get things back in order. So from the perspective of having this index in hand, now let's look at what we do next. Next thing is to take your first practice exam. Um, you log into the GIAC portal in order to do that. And so you can go to the um, GIAC portal. It's, uh, it's GIAC.org. So here we've got um, GIAC.org. You've got your certifications, your GIAC certification portal. Inside of, uh, inside of this location, uh, you have the certification attempts. Uh, that you can actually make. I don't have any open attempts currently, um, but here you would have the, uh, the certification attempts and you would have your practice tests. So you click on practice tests 
And when you do that, you'll see the practice tests that are available to you. Uh, most of mine are expired because it's uh, it's been a while since I've uh, I've taken a certification um, exam. So you can go ahead and uh, take take those certification exams um, as practice exams. Now, my suggestion for you is to take the practice exam exactly like you're going to take the real exam. Have your books ready. Have your index ready. Maintain a neat pile of both of those. Have your stuff on the table ready to go. Make sure that you have three or four hours because once you start the exam, it's it's over. I mean, it's not finished, but as soon as you choose to start that exam, it is consumed. Okay, so be ready. This is a very valuable part of you getting ready to take the exam is the practice exam. While you're taking the practice exam, don't get sidetracked. Take the exam, do that, and then if you have something that you don't know, look it up for about the same duration of time that you would look up during the real exam, which is about you know two to three minutes of lookup time in terms of uh, trying to get the question right. You want to get every single question right, but after several minutes of working on it, um, you know, it's probably worth you making your best choice rather than spending 10, 15, 20 minutes on a single question when that isn't worth maybe not answering all the other questions on the exam. During this time, while you're taking the exam, the practice exam, write down things that you do not know well because that is going to be your notes for after the first practice exam to go back and fix your data. So the question then becomes if you're ready to take the real exam. Um, the way that I make this decision is I look at the passing qualification for the exam that I'm trying to pass, and then I decide how high above that I got when I took the practice exam. So for example, the GCIH passing qualification is 73%. Now, if you got a 45% on the first exam, I don't think you're ready for the real exam. If you got an 85% on the on the first practice test, then I think that you're ready. I don't see any point in taking a second practice test if you got an 85% on the first one. Okay. So compare your performance. Now, I have had students in the past who have gotten 30s on the first two practice exams. And they contacted me and they said, what should I do? And I said, y you know what you should do? Is you should buy the extension, you get two more practice exams, and just keep studying. Because if everybody approaches this material from a different starting point. If whatever one you're working on is not familiar to you, then you need more practice. That's the point of it, right? Keep going, keep practicing, keep working through this. Um, the practice exams are really valuable. Refine the index. Build another index. Throw the first index away, right? This is something where it's all about you getting exposure to the material and not about you wasting your effort. In order to learn things, you need to expend tremendous effort. So do that. Keep on going, okay? Now, you take the exam in a certification center. When you're taking the exam, keep your books in good order. Close the book after you've looked up the stuff and put it back in the stack in the exact same order that it should belong. I keep book one on top and book you know six on bottom, but you can do it the other way if that makes more sense to you. But don't get sloppy. Take the exam in a relaxed and professional manner. Look up every single question that you're not sure about. And keep in mind about how much time you have available for each question. You've got about two minutes per question. It'll take you about 30 seconds to read the question. Some are a little bit longer, but it'll take you about 30 seconds to read the question and answers. And then it'll take you about 30 seconds to a minute to decide on which is the best one. And if you need to look it up, it's okay. You have time. Go look it up. You want to get every single question right. If you are at the point where you've now spent five minutes looking through your books, you need to make the decision, do I have enough to go on with this question where I can answer it, or is it worth it for me to spend another five minutes? 
And if you're really confident in all of the material, but this one's sort of a, a detailed question that you are looking for a very specific reference and you know it's there somewhere, then it's worth it for you to spend another five or 10 minutes finding the thing that you wanna find. If you have no idea what you're looking for and you've already spent 10 minutes on this one question, stop, make a decision, go with it, okay? Now, the last step is to let me know that you've passed. I'm fully confident that you will actually pass this certification exam. Okay. Now, it's just interesting for me, it's a personal note, but uh, each week that I teach for SANS, I meet about 20 new people, which means that over the course of a year, you know, I teach between 10 and 20 times for SANS. That's, you know, two to 400 people that I meet uh, in a year that are that work in the same uh you know area that i work in most of whom i'll never see again <laughs> okay so uh don't be a stranger and if this is something that um you used in order to uh to pass your certification exam email me um it's chris at montance.com it's pretty easy it's on the website too um my twitter handle secro montance you can tweet it to me you can send me a private message um you can uh, send me a phone call uh, text message, whatever you want to do, right? Um, so if you're feeling stuck and you're not comfortable and you're having issues with the certification exam and you want advice or you have questions about specific things, contact me. I'm, uh, I'm happy to help. Uh, so a bunch of different things that I have out there. Um, you can uh, you can look at a lot of presentations that I've written. This is just one thing. I have a lot of different uh, a lot of different um, recordings that are out there where I talk about security related uh, subjects, which you're welcome to take a look at. And the Montans.com site is uh, is material on on what I do um, when I'm not teaching for.